International trade in rhinoceros horn has been declared illegal by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora sites, since 1977. A proposal by Swaziland to lift the international ban was rejected in October 2016. Domestic sale of rhinoceros horn in South Africa home of 80% of the remaining rhino population, was banned as of 2009. However, that ban was overturned in a court case in 2017, and South Africa plans to draft regulations for the sale of rhino horn, possibly including export for non-commercial purposes. The South African government has suggested that a legal trade of rhino horn be established, arguing that this could reduce poaching and prevent the extinction of this species. Rhinoceros horns, unlike those of other horned mammals, which have a bony core, only consist of keratin, similar to human hair and nails. Rhinoceros horns are used in traditional medicines in parts of Asia, and for dagger handles in Yemen and Oman. Esmond Bradley Martin has reported on the trade for dagger handles in Yemen. In Europe, it was historically believed that rhino horns could purify water and could detect poisoned liquids, and likely as an aphrodisiac and an antidote to poison. Examples of rhino horn products seized by the Hong Kong government, 2017. The Vietnamese are currently the biggest consumers of rhino horn, and their demand drives most of the poaching, which has risen to record levels the Vietnam Sites Management Authority has claimed that Hanoi recently experienced a 77% drop in the usage of rhino horn, but National Geographic has challenged these claims noticing that there was no rise in the numbers of criminals who were apprehended or prosecuted. South African rhino poaching's main destination market is Vietnam. An average-sized horn can bring in as much as a quarter of a million dollars in Vietnam and many rhino range states have stockpiles of rhino horn. It is a common misconception that rhinoceros horn in powdered form is used as an aphrodisiac or a cure for cancer in traditional Chinese medicine as cornu rhinoceri asiaticae, scio, rhinoceros horn, no TCM text in history has ever mentioned such prescriptions. In traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, Rhino horn is considered an effective medicine sometimes prescribed for fevers and convulsions, a treatment not supported by evidence-based medicine and has been compared to consuming fingernail clippings in water. In 1993, China signed the CITES Treaty and removed rhinoceros horn from the Chinese medicine pharmacopoeia, administered by the Ministry of Health. In 2011, the Register of Chinese Herbal Medicine in the United Kingdom issued a formal statement condemning the use of rhinoceros horn. A growing number of TCM educators are also speaking out against the practice. Discussions with TCM practitioners to reduce the use of rhino horn has met with mixed results because some still believe that it is a life-saving medicine. In March 2013, some researchers suggested that the only way to reduce poaching would be to establish a regulated trade based on humane and renewable harvesting from live rhinos. The WWF however opposes legalization of the horn trade, as it may increase demand, while IFAW released a report by Echo Large suggesting that more thorough knowledge of economic factors is required to justify the pro-trade option. To prevent poaching, in certain areas, rhinos have been tranquilized and their horns removed. Armed park rangers, particularly in South Africa, are also working on the front lines to combat poaching, sometimes killing poachers who are caught in the act.
a recent spike in rhino killings has made conservationists concerned about the future of the species. In 2011, the Rhino Rescue Project, organized by Ed and Lorinda Hearn of the Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve in Krugerstorp, South Africa, began a horn trade control method consisting of infusing the horns, while on the living animal, with a mixture of a pink dye and an acari side, to kill ticks, which is safe for rhinos but toxic to humans. After sedating the animal, a worker drills holes into the horns, adds fittings, and connects the cavity with rubber hoses to a 2 foot by 4 inch diameter metal container of the liquid mixture, which they then pressurize the infusion takes less than 20 minutes of the 45 minutes of anesthesia. Because of the high pressure on the animal's internal organs from their large body weight, workers turn them every 7 minutes while they're sedated. The procedure also includes inserting three RFID identification chips and taking DNA samples. Because of the fibrous nature of rhino horn, the pressurized dye infuses the interior of the horn but does not color the surface or affect rhino behavior. Depending on the quantity of horn a person consumes, experts believe the acaricide would cause nausea, stomach ache, and diarrhea, and possibly convulsions, depending on the quantity. It would not be fatal the primary deterrent is the knowledge that the treatment has been applied, communicated by signs posted at the refuges. The original idea grew out of research into the horn as a reservoir for one-time tick treatments, and experts selected an acaricide they think is safe for the rhino, oxpeckers, vultures, and other animals in the preserve's ecosystem. Proponents claim that the dye cannot be removed from the horns, and remains visible on X-ray scanners even when the horn is ground to a fine powder. The UK charity organisation Save the Rhino has criticised horn poisoning on moral and practical grounds. The organization questions the assumptions that the infusion technique works as intended, and that even if the poison were effective, whether middlemen in a lucrative, illegal trade would care much about the effect it would have on buyers on another continent. They also claim that poisoned horns could heighten demand for non-poisoned horns among wealthier buyers, or could fuel the belief in magical properties of the horn if people survive the poisoning. Additionally, rhino horn is increasingly purchased for decorative use, rather than for use in traditional medicine. Save the Rhino questions the feasibility of applying the technique to all African rhinos, since workers would have to reapply the acaricide every four years. It was also reported that one out of 150 rhinos treated did not survive the anesthesia. Another way to undercut the rhinoceros horn market has been suggested by Matthew Marcus of Pembient, a biotechnology firm. He proposes the synthesis of an artificial substitute for rhinoceros horn. To enable authorities to distinguish the bioengineered horn from real rhinoceros horn, the genetic code of the bioengineered horn could be registered similar to the DNA of living rhinoceros in the RHODIS, Rhino DNA Index System. Initial responses from many conservationists were negative, but a 2016 report from Traffic which monitors trade in wildlife and animal parts conceded that it would be rash to rule out the possibility that trade in synthetic rhinoceros horn could play a role in future conservation strategies.